welcome back YouTubers to my channel and everyday life with an SB. If you're following me right now, I'm SB Ancelol or I'm known as SB for short and I'm all about creating mental health and awareness versus sharing my life story with Asperger's Syndrome and the like just to get to know me more under another mask of these diagnoses that I go through every day of my personal struggles as well as hopefully being a mental advocate for you for when you are down and out with spreading some message of hope and message of inspiration and all so that you know that you're not alone and also obviously that I'm hoping to sh bring out some tips and advice along the way of certain everyday topics that may come your way of what we may struggle with or just everyday general stuff that you know I struggle with that may be of help to you be it you know what I'm sharing right now or later on so please respect some of the stuff that I'm sharing with you all because some of it may be of value to someone that you know of so you know it's in all honesty it's all about knowing the signs and symptoms and get the help we need you know as well as the other person when we see these signs and symptoms so the matter is you know think fast or act fast beforehand so don't further ado guys at this current time I'm doing the ADHD and series to try and tidy and call you know tidy up and finish up so far you know based on what I've researched as well as based on some things that people may have shared with me in the past and present of the average day struggles of certain everyday topics with the condition of this and um you know it's it's never easy with some people with different conditions to try and meet their needs but then again it's all about managing as much as possible the needs of others around us regardless and hopefully that we can be the balance between the yin and yang and meat and harmony so not for the guys this one's all about time management for people with for adults with ADHD especially and as we know though despite it all that you know every time people tend to struggle with it it's, and I'm going to be bringing up more about time management in general hopefully of the different types and advice for you all but this one's just going to be for people with ADHD you got to remember though though sometimes as I said before with people with ADHD they tend to forget a lot of things and they get uh, so solely absorbed into maybe one task than the other similarly like you know people with Asperger's syndrome like me but then again you know with the right people around around them they might be able to go far as well and that no matter what I feel that you know Sometimes many people just tend to, you know, throw away a person or friendship just because of someone else's differences, which is a sad reality, but I guess that's just the way of living at the moment. So here's, a t here's about 10 points I can think of for meeting deadlines, big or small, regardless of what you may be doing, be it you've got a busy schedule ahead of you, maybe some reports you have to do in a business or even in a classroom or what have you as, as an example here maybe um but you know time management it can be a good thing depending on the you know different types and subtypes that we use of a method that's best suited for us so you know some of these tips should be useful to you and i hope so but please let me know below if there's any i've missed even though these are the top 10 i could think of right now okay tip number one don't bite off more than you chew you can chew. What I'm meaning here is sometimes we need to consider how much time is available in our day because as we know there's only 24 hours a day you know and we tend to feel that despite our business schedule we need to basically get everything done in one day and sometimes that's what I'm learning now to just break it down to it as an okay 24 hours a day what can I do in those 24 hours you know regardless many people may think you know think that it doesn't work, you know, breaking it down, thinking silently to ourselves, you know, pen to paper, writing down maybe to-do lists, because obviously people with ADHD, especially, especially myself also, I've noticed, I'm sure that many people may do this too, not just people with my condition or ADHD, but they, when they write down lists, it's a helpful kind of reminder for them, you know, step by step what they have to do in their busy schedule, regardless of what it may be, you see, you know. Sometimes it's no brainer though when it comes down to it, you know, if we're taking on a new project or as I said before as an example, like we've got a business report to be done in our in a business or even in the classroom, some form of scientific report maybe. Maybe we need to cut back on some of the other activities basically that we, you know, do in our everyday lives. I'm not meaning just to cut it out completely, but just maybe some, you know, 
some of the ones that may cause distraction to the point where we're not meeting the deadline as such as well and that we need to you know be able to you know cut them back to a point where we can focus on what's important here in order to finish our projects on time always on time number two post your deadlines where you'll see them this will remind you obviously like if you've got to-do lists or a calendar app versus your to-do lists versus your everyday list you know we need to this will help us to remind us to use our time wisely again okay for me when i used to try to manage my time wisely okay um i usually have a course of action or shall we say an overview of like overview of the course outline of what's expected of me of the day when i used to study be it in high school intermediate right through to uni i did this and i felt that this was useful by highlighting the important keywords versus just you know writing down set little reminders in my diary or calendar of certain you know schedules that are coming up bits you know okay i've got a business report that's due in three weeks time versus maybe a synopsis well not synopsis as such but just a computer assignment that's due two days time so therefore it's a matter of balancing up the time right maybe a little take as i said before previously on tip number one just take out little bits at a time of it you know and focus on maybe the hardest topics before the smaller ones and then also sometimes with me, um, I'll, for the daily reminder for these assignments that are due, regardless of what it is, you know, I'll end up putting in bright red letters on my calendar or what have you, just to tell me, especially like maybe on my phone, especially, you know, the due date, you know, as a little reminder. I had a little funny app that just did that all the time, remind me, and actually, you know, gave me fun, some funny, you know, sound effects, but then it just happens. But then, you know, it happens. Anyway, tip number three, let's get on with this before I lose track of time, of, as well as my trial of thought of what I'm trying to illustrate to you all, so I'm sorry, I'm just full of ideas here that might be of use to you. Anyway, breaking down your big projects into smaller projects and assign a deadline for completing each one. Again, that's similar to what I've just mentioned in one and two tips. Most of the time, we're given a deadline for the date by which the entire project has to be completed by. No brainer. But to keep ourselves on track, though, however, we can mark the dates by which you should complete one quarter of the project, one half, and so on. Those dates will alert you to the problems where there's still time to play catch up. And also, when it comes down to breaking up these little projects at a time, and you're alternating these different projects that you've got of your tasks, you know, of your everyday things that I've learnt for myself, especially if you just absorb into maybe, say, for me, I, I did about 30 minutes to an hour on one particular subject, break 15 minutes, you know, of my valuable listening to music or whatever to wind down, and then go to another particular topic or subject later on on my second part of the day or second part of the time that I was doing it with but then again you know you've got to be in mind that one shouldn't have that many distractions but then again some people may say that you know having a bit of distractions can be good so many people as I said will probably work differently to others so that's just me anyway okay for, tip, for the time tips again of the management tips as you know, for some ADS dislike deadlines so much that they are often reluctant to set appropriate deadlines for others. So therefore, this one's all about setting deadlines for others and sharing the workload with others so that maybe you can work as a team and actually go with it. And if you're not sure of something, when, when you've got some more than one hint working together, then you'll be able to obviously compare notes and exchange different matters of opinions and values of that kind of you know um, thesis or what have you that you were to do okay um, tip number five when times are on short outsource okay I I used to be a real perfectionist when it came down to my workload bit you know as many people may know my workload ethics basically highlighting keywords and the like and most of the time, 
I was so self-absorbed to the point that I'm putting too much time and effort into f putting the finishing touches of what was needed, be it on my business report or what have you, you know. But then, you know, it's okay to maybe, hopefully, if the electoral, whoever you're with at the time will allow it, is basically to come to the point that if you're stuck on something, you can ask a question to them and actually, you know, see if someone else may be able to, if it was a group project, help you out in that part of the project. But then, you know, we shouldn't be assuming that we must be doing every portion of the project. You know, it makes sense to outsource or delegate to one another. You know, tip number six, take frequent breaks. Many people tend to, like, no matter what condition, I know for a fact I'm a bad person for that. Sometimes I learnt, I learnt to, I was learning this because it was the one thing I always forget is taking my frequent breaks and actually maybe have 15 to 30 minutes break to do something else or get something to eat or drink and whatnot. But then again, you know, the ones that tend to fail to get away from the project, not always, may occasionally or most likely to start avoiding the project or just plain old give up and throw in the towel and, you know, call it quits. So, you know, sometimes for a person with ADHD, especially if they haven't taken their frequent breaks, it's maybe good to have someone there to remind them as well, to avoid them having burnouts like any normal person would, you have burnouts. Okay, number seven is start and end when you say well. Okay, like set a time schedule in your day. Like what for me, I'm all about you know schedules, be it whatever it may be. Back in the days when I was in intermediate high school and uni, you know, having a diary from nine to five or eight to five or whatever times I was at you at the uni versus basically, shall we say, intermediate and whatnot, so that it gives me time to break away from it after maybe those times of study versus, you know, hours in the classroom, I can at least maybe have it half an hour to an hour in the evening to wind down with other people around me if I can find people to socialise with or just doing my own thing. Then, um, sometimes though, you've got to be in mind though, people might have the thought, especially with people with ADHD and ADD, they'll take a break and do something else and look on it later in the evening. But then again, this can be dangerous for some, you know, especially for those who are easily distracted. Number eight, changing your inner voice. Okay, many, many people tend to, you know, when it comes down to their study and time management versus everything else in between, they tend to go and sway on the negative things, you know. And sometimes, when you, I don't know how, how to word this properly, but someone I witnessed a long time ago, I'm not sure if they still do it today, but they said to me that if they're harder on themselves, basically, you know, talking themselves down, you know, calling them this stuff an idiot, an asshole, or what have you, they feel that they will get more of a motivation boost out of themselves, and basically, out of that motivation boost, it helps them to actually, hopefully, stay focused on that set task that they're doing. But then, again, how I look at it, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. Yes, okay, you can talk, you have to obviously outweigh your positives versus your negatives and whatnot, but then again, how I look at it is, you know, you're looking at some positive statements about yourself that you can, you know, do this and keep yourself from getting distracted and that, and if you've got a goal set in mind, you know, while you're positive and that, you know, this will help you stay motivated. Um, an example maybe for this, though, for positive affirmations and keeping nearby at a glance for you is also for an example is like maybe saying you know I'm going to feel great when I hand this into my lecturer after finishing my report on time or simply 
you know, putting down, you can do this no matter what. <clears throat> Pardon me. Anyway, number nine. Define your objectives. Okay, obviously it's good to have some objectives or outcomes. Obviously, you know, we know that sometimes an objective is for some of us in a way of our learning, be it whatever it may be, of a business paper, what have you, in my case, you know, was to learn as much as possible in that given area of topic. You know, um, and also, like, the other thing is, to me, was at the time with my defining objective was, yes, I'm there for, like, almost a year of study at Polytech, and that I feel that, you know, it's about saving money, being able to be on time, I'm responsible for my own actions, I'm obviously the one in control of everything that I say and do, I'm the one in control of my study, no one else can do my studies for me, I'm an adult, so whatever I say, I hate to say this, but many people will hate me for saying it, anything that says goes in my books, you know, so, but then I'm trying to break out that habit, and trial of thought there and you know at the end of the day you know for most people with ADHD I've noticed is for them finishing on time could be one of their most important objective of all times for them you know I could be wrong please for anyone that is out there that has or has ADHD please comment below if I'm wrong or what have you you know because obviously it's it's okay for me to make mistakes here of what I'm sharing. It's all about learning from each other, so feel free to comment below. And last but not least, on the tip of this ADHD and time management, is it, it may see if all else fails, hire a nanny or a babysitter or someone that can help you, because it may be at a glance a bit too overwhelming for some of us, you know, but then again, you know. A nanny or a tutor can save save your money in the long run. I should say a tutor as well if you want an after school tutor or something. But then again, you know, many people may argue the fact oh, tutoring is going to cost me too much while I'm at school or at school. But if you want to do well, obviously this is a way to go. I feel because you know at the end of the day, if you've got some lecturers that are willing to take up their time out of their day after you know your polytech hours, or whatever like what happened with me a few times just to get an understanding of certain things which was good at the time of my polytech and I actually recommend her for doing this I'm not sure if she'll ever watch this but she'll know who she is hopefully but I, I thank her from the bottom of my heart for actually teaching me some bits and pieces even though you know many lecturers may think especially back in the time during my study at polytech versus you know especially in high school think I'm trying them out and whatnot, but hopefully with a better understanding now to where I'm, <laughs> where I'm at right now that they'll understand me more better as a person. But anyway, this is the end of, you know, the ADHD and time management tips for adults. It could help for kids as well. I don't know. So feel free to actually maybe share these videos around. Comment, you know, below if I've missed out any tips that is of relevance or just even comment below of how you cope with your time management so everyone else can learn from each other. Feel free to subscribe if you've done so. Give me the like for thumbs up for engagement and support. Feel free to also just you know share these videos as I see to your family and friends. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, SB Answers or private message me on Facebook, SB Answers or even just your know, direct message me on YouTube. Do what you love, love what you do. Until next time, have a great day and I'll see you all again soon.